नमस्ते एंड साइरा वेलकम टू देवास अनलिमिटेड आई एम शगुना आई एम शिवानी डिड वी टेल यू टुडे हाउ ब्यूटीफुल यू आर एंड हाउ मच यू आर लव्ड वेल द देवास आर टेलिंग यू नाउ जय साइरा देवास आर हायर एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ योरसेल्फ दे आर डिवाइन बीइंग्स फिल्ड विद लव वेटिंग टू हेल्प यू इन काउंटलेस वेज whether it is your relationship finance career self confidence assertiveness okay finding direction in life intensifying your spiritual practice or anything else that you need guidance for devas fill your life with joy reminding you that being is perfect bliss all you need to do is ask at devas unlimited we help you connect with your devas they are right here right now waiting for you just imagine on the other side there is a stadium filled with devas sitting and twiddling their thumbs not knowing what to do because people have stopped calling upon them dear atma selves and embodiments of love tune into the devic consciousness of pure love allow the devas to guide you towards realizing the truth that you are and have always been the atma close your eyes take a deep breath and ask yourself where do i begin and where do i end ask the devas to remind you to be the truth i am i connect with the uplifting energies of the devas at devas unlimited Let's go ahead and begin with three ohms. Oh. 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 Sairam everyone and welcome back to our uh, bi-weekly meditation. So please forgive me I'm just recovering from a cold 
people if I have to cough and all that, please uh, be patient with me. So let's review what uh, we had done last time. Does anyone remember you? what happened to the ladies this time? Usually gents are like so few and ladies are so much. How come it's reversed here locally? Uh, so what was, do you remember the homework? To practice soham. Oh, that's very difficult. To speak softly and lovingly to everybody. So uh, we just get one or two. Up in. Can you pass out the, the mic? And uh, we'll start from the gents side this time. Uh, you want to share how you did with the homework? respect to speaking softly and lovingly, on the exterior it happened. Inside my head, I was full of mm -hmm. clearly. So exteriorly, on the outside you were speaking sweetly and softly, but not inside. Okay, why, why was that, I think? A lot of anger. Uh-huh. Okay, a lot of anger back to the situation. Anyone else want to share? Were you here last time, sir? You want to share your practice of the homework? Speaking softly, one or two times, yeah, I lost track of it, even though it was in my mind. So it's difficult to speak softly and sweetly Sometimes. for a whole month. What is it about speaking sweetly and softly that's so Difficult, do you think? Pass the mic. I think our judgments and opinions come in. Love or that is so love faith. Mm -hmm. Whatever goes on in our mission, analyzing judgment. That comes in. Actually. So in other words, our interaction with them, whatever love that we feel or that Swami tells us to feel, is not unconditional, right? It's conditional. As long as you do what I say, as long as you speak the way I like you to say, as long as you agree with me, then I will love you. But the moment that you do something different, then everything else stops. So we learned this from Swami, where Swami would come across all different types of people from different countries, different backgrounds. But that was not the main thing. It was people with different desires, different attachments, different wants from Swami. Some people would come for liberation, for moksha. Others would come for blessings from their wife, their husband, their children, their this thing, their that thing, business, whatever it was. They would want some Swami to cure their health problem. And they were asking for what Swami will give everything. God is there to give us whatever we require. So there's nothing wrong with that. But if they stop there, if they fail to ask for moksha, for liberation, they're missing that which the Lord himself has come to give. So... Like that, we have to not limit our love. We limit our desires for God to worldly things. We should not do that. Neither should we limit our love. It should be unlimited love. Remember that story that I had told you all when we had asked Swami, when I had asked him, Swami, sometimes uh, we, we see the way that you love, but sometimes we are not able to. This was the question I asked Swami. Immediately, but Swami gave the answer. What was the answer? Because sometimes you are afraid, and I said, because we're afraid, Swami, because I always wanted to confirm that I understood what Swami was telling me. Because sometimes you're afraid, Swami, and Swami turned to me, I was sitting here on this side, and Swami said, and because sometimes you forget. So we're not able to speak sweetly or softly. We're not able to love like Swami does because we are afraid get. Now I'll give you an example of the other way. Recently, we had gone, gone to Mumbai for work, and we had gone to the Department of Atomic Energy. All the hi-fi scientists, and these are like nuclear physicists, you know? I mean, these are like the bigwigs, engineers and all that we had met, and we, prevented, we had presented our a technology that we use for work, Pure Skies, and they were all impressed, etc., etc. And the long and short of it is, we had come there for one-hour meeting. The meeting 
was finished. They asked us to stay for lunch. Then after lunch, we went to their back to their office to talk. They asked us as we were there for three hours because they weren't allowing us to leave. And I said, sir, we have another meeting at such and such time. In, in Mumbai, you know, distances are quite large. They weren't letting us leave. And I realized it was actually just Swami's love coming from us, going to them, that was attracting these scientists and engineers, hardcore, like, you know, really hardcore scientists. And it was just that love that was pulling them towards us. That's all. So we can forget love, we can be afraid to love, or we can just put all that aside and be love. And in today's meditation practice, what we're going to do is I want you to stop fighting with Swami. Okay? That is the homework for this month. Is to, now everybody's laughing as if <laughs> you're all doing this, right? But that is the homework, to stop fighting with Swami. And that's what we're going to do this next series of men. The reason those atomic energy scientists were so in love with us, not because of anything special about me or the other people who are with us, it was because of Swami's love coming, pouring through us, towards them. That is real sadhana. It is a sign of your sadhana. We weren't fighting with Swami. We weren't resisting anything Swami said. The meeting went fine. We just went with the flow. The divine flow and everything worked out fine but it only happens when we stop fighting with the lord so that is the homework let's do our first meditation for it. okay so wherever you are however you are uh, you can sit up straight keep your neck straight if you're sitting in a chair like i am then keep your feet both feet flat on the ground without crossing your legs if you're sitting on the ground in a meditation mat then sit with your legs crossed if you like to sit in Padmasana, do so only if you're experienced. Otherwise, sit in a typical cross-legged position. Make sure your feet are comfortable. Keep your back straight and your neck straight. You can keep your eyes open, half-closed, or completely closed, whatever is comfortable. And you can place your palms, your hands comfortably in your lap or on your knees. If there's a mudra you like to do, that's also fine. We can discuss those in more detail in a later session. Okay, so how to fight? Oh, no. How to stop fighting with Swami. Fighting with Swami, we're all experts. How to stop fighting with Swami. Okay, let's take a deep breath. Let go everything that you don't need. Another deep breath. As you exhale, let go of whatever no longer suits you. Take another deep breath. Let go of all your worries. Whatever is bothering you, whatever is not uncomfortable, whatever is not comfortable, sorry. Then again, let go of all your stresses and strain. Whatever is making you anxious, tense, just let go. Give it to the Lord. Let the Lord take it. He knows much better than us exactly what you need. Just let go. Just let go. Breathe in. See whatever is bothering you. Personal life, professional life, go. Whatever is bothering you in your relationships, let go. Give it to the Lord. Whatever is bothering you in your finances, let go. Breathe in deeply. Really, you're giving everything to the Lord because He can take it all. Breathing in, and extra, every time you exhale, just let go. Let go. Okay, let's stop here for a minute. <clears throat> you can come back now. You can take the mic if you have it. Where did you have difficulty letting go? That's just here. Where did you? And if there's audience online, you can also uh, send us your messages as well. Where did you have difficulty 
letting go. What was, where did you get stuck? Or you were able to let go completely? Anything? Attachments? I am not even beginning to let go of it. I am st still like having a lot of resistance to give up. Because I know intellectually, my heart also says I should give it to Swami and then let his will prevail. But my mind is like not ready. Ah, so your mind is not ready. That's a good one. That's a good one. Anyone else have trouble? Just letting go? Because unless you let go completely, it's very difficult. I like to give up my emotions, uh, which take over us. Like, so the emotions take over the reasoning part, part of yourself, and you would like to let go of let the go of control emotions. that emotions yes. have on you. Okay. That's a good one. That's a good one. Okay. What I feel is that uh, the letting go happens in the moment when I'm there, like, like now, it, then it comes back. Ah, good point. See, it's easy when you're here, you're sitting with Dr. Srikanth, we're all so peaceful, we're all such good Sai devotees, we practice meditation five hours a day, we do Narayan Seva ten times a week, we're all so good. You know, that's all fine, but the moment you go back into the real world, then it all starts again. So the practice actually is not here in this room. The practice is when you're in your office, when you're in your work, when you're in the shopping mall, when you're in, for me, traffic, you know. Sometimes I feel like bringing up Brahmastra and going zoom, you know, but I don't. So, you know, how that's where the practice actually is. So what I would suggest you do as another homework is to purposely go into a situation that you're not comfortable, not familiar with. Don't go to bars and strip clubs and things. That's not what I'm saying. But go to a place that you're not so comfortable with, let's say a shopping mall or a train station or bus stand, and see, can you still remain, retain awareness of Swami as everything? Can you still retain awareness that Swami alone can you still practice that everything that you see is God? Just go to the local coffee shop and let that be your sadhana. Just sit there. People will come, people will go. You will have your cup of tea or coffee with you and just practice. In that setting, can you still see the oneness? Can you let go of whatever it is that's keeping you from realizing that all of this is God, that you are God, and that everything else is God, only God exists, the truth. So let's practice this again. Let's go back inside. All relaxed, such a peaceful environment. Bring up your shoulders towards your, your, your ears if you like, and just exhale. <sighs> Let go of whatever tension, whatever strain you're carrying, you know, it's very hard to connect with the Lord, with Swami inside, holding on to tension, anxiety. Breathe in again. Really let go. Whatever you were trying to let go of before, see if you can be free. Imagine it's a, like a package, maybe wrapped in a bag or a box, a crate, whatever comes to your mind in your inner scene and just hand it over to Swami for him to take. You can even ask him to destroy it. Maybe he throws it in a volcano, burns it in a fire, or just turns it into dust. Just give it to the Lord. That's all. 
just take whatever it is that you're that is bothering you and give it to the lord now it doesn't mean that you become inactive it doesn't mean that you become inert or that you ignore your duty or your dharma you're still active in the world because we are all living very much in the world that's where we have been placed but you are no longer bound or trapped by it. Now, it will come back again, as you said. It will come back again because it's been with you for so long. This fear, this fighting, this addictions, these attachments, the wanting to allow the emotional body to get control of you, wanting to allow these thoughts to, to uh, control you as if they're driving you and you're not able to move in any other way. It's been there for a long time. So each time it comes, just let go, let go, let go go. If physically it helps, you can get up and move to a different place, do something different. But you have to be able to let go because unless you let go, you're not going to stop fighting with. If I don't have anything to fight with you about, why will I fight? Right? But when I have these things, these attachments, I want things to come this way and this way and that way, then I will fight with Swami and he'll go on fighting with him. Right? All the time, fight, fighting, fight. Every step of the way, sometimes. Okay, now let's see what it's like to not have to fight anymore. Just to see what it's like to be in that divine flow. Right? Let's go back into meditation. In your inner scene, imagine a beautiful river. Maybe there's grass or fields. Maybe there's a forest. It's a slow moving river. The water is crystal clear. You can see small, brightly colored fish in the clear water. Little pebbles, river pebbles, and so forth. You keep your feet in the water, and it's a very pleasant temperature. Maybe there's a waterfall coming in on one side of the river. There's a lake. Perhaps children are playing. People are having a good time, just enjoying and frolicking in the lake. Maybe there's birds chirping. Breeze is blowing. The scent of flowers is coming across. And just walk into the water. Let it come to your knees. And unafraid, just to walk with all confidence. This is a divine river. It's the river of the Lord. I'm going to walk straight into it and be completely absorbed. So allow yourself to come walk into the river. You can continue breathing. It doesn't matter. You're completely underwater. Just keep walking. Realize that this is a divine river. It's actually not water. It's just vibration. Vibration of pure, unconditional love. That is your true reality. The very basis of God. Walk in until you're completely immersed. And you're just floating in what now seems to be an ocean this gigantic river that just continues to flow and flow. As you look around and choose to move in this water wherever you like, you see dolphins go by, you see fish swimming by, you see other happy sadhakas, spiritual aspirants just like you, also swimming by, moving effortlessly in this water. Schools of fish come by. And then you see something beautiful. You see one sadhaka, he or she, doesn't matter, looks very bright. So much light, so much love, so much tejas. So they just catch your eyes. And as you watch, this sadhaka allows his or her body to dissolve into the water till there's nothing left. You see how beautiful it is. This happened. Watch. And then you realize that you can do the same thing. This gigantic river of divine love, you can also dissolve yourself completely until you become one with that divine love. So let's go ahead and try. If you have trouble, let's ask the Lord for help.
and then come back. We're going to do this a couple of times. We're going to do this a few times. It's important for you to be able to lose yourself, dissolve yourself completely in God, to become zero. We've had this discussion before. Swami says that God is the only hero and the rest are all zeros, right? But that zero, most, at least I thought initially that that zero meant being humble, being simple, being silent. That was my understanding of being hero, not of being zero, sorry, not taking credit and so forth. But later I understood that actually being zero means being nothing. Not nothing as in nothing, but as in being no thing just being empty so that the Lord's love, Swami's love, His light comes through. Even if that's atomic scientist at the Department of Atomic Energy, I mean, this is how it works, right? That's the power of His love. It was working on His own. It wasn't anything that I was doing. And, you know, the same thing happened the next day. I went to Delhi from Mumbai, and there I had to meet the vice president of a large laboratory. And we were talking, and we were just talking about HPLC, we were talking about gas chromatography. We were talking about scientific techniques and instrumentation. And this gentleman, he would have married me. He was just falling in love with me. It was Swami's love just coming through me. And we're just talking about pharmaceutical purity and how we measure different types of testing and if he could do the type of testing that our company re requires and so forth. That was the context of the discussion. But he was ready to fall in love. He was already in love. He was ready to make a proposal. That's the power when you become zero, when you become no thing. The Lord will work through you. His darshan will flow to you and through you. So let me stop here, take questions, and then we're going to do it again. Are there any questions that are either from online or? Go ahead, yes, from the previous question. So one common question for letting go is, thoughts keep coming and going. Mm, thoughts keep coming and going. Last time I said, why so many thoughts? No, they're not doing sadhana. Huh. But actually it's the duty of the mind to think, right? Just it's the duty of the eyes to see and the duty of the ears to hear. The work of the mind is to think. That's its natural state. You can allow yourself to be pulled away by those thoughts or you can simply watch your thoughts, be the witness. You can try to silence the mind, and it works well, but generally requires a lot of sadhana and a lot of intense work, and it does work well. You can also use the symbols that are given in the Phyllis Crystal Method. On your right-hand side, you see a ruler. That is the type of uh, measuring tape that carpenters use. Allow the measuring tape to be pulled out all the way to its end, and then in your inner scene, release it, and then allow in your inner scene that measuring tape to come all the way back and make a snap, a snapping sound as it goes back into the case. Whatever technique you use, either witnessing or watching or trying to silence the mind using the tape measure technique, don't be bothered by the thoughts. It just takes a little bit of training. You know, it's like when you first start to run, initially it's a little hard, but then after you keep up with it, it becomes quite comfortable. There is one question regarding this dissolving. The thought of dissolving is scary. Ah, that's what I was hoping someone would ask that question. Very good, thank you. The thought of dissolving is scary. As if you're going to lose yourself, as if you even existed in the first place, really. What you think you are is total BS, total Maya. What you want is of no relevance. Okay, the only thing that matters is God's will. What is Swami's will? What is Swami's sankalpa? That's the only thing that matters. Follow that in your daily life. When you are in a boat going down a river, let's say you have a sailboat, a simple sailboat, would you like to go upstream or downstream? Obviously downstream, right? Why would you want to fight the current? Yet this is what we do all the time when we are with Swami. We fight Swami all the time, always fighting, 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 always going against the stream, going against the current. If I lose myself and I dissolve myself, what will happen to me? Nothing will happen to you. You're supposed to be nothing, no thing. You're supposed to be zero. 
And in that, you become everything. You become everything. Let's try it again. Okay, go back to the edge of the river. It's a beautiful river, it's crystal clean. The shoreline is clean, you are clean. The clothes that you're wearing are pristine. You look really handsome. If you're a lady, you look very beautiful. Just walk into the river. The temperature is very comfortable for you. And as you walk in, walk in, walk in, fishes are swimming and dancing around you. Dolphins are swimming in the distance, asking you to come in. The other sadhakas who are already there, your brothers and sisters are all beckoning to you to come into this river of divine love. And as you enter completely, you start to swim deeper and deeper into its depths. You realize that actually there is no bottom to this river. It just goes on and on, but there's light all around. And you remember that lovely sadhaka that you saw last time? Allow yourself to dissolve completely. This time, let's go a little bit further. Just look at your body. Allow the whole thing to dissolve as if it just turns to sand and the sand itself dissolves away into nothingness. And all that's left of you is awareness, is consciousness. Just in this endless ocean of divine love, wherever you look, you see only divine love. Try this for some time. Then let's come back. See, that's it. Just takes a moment. It's not a long, lengthy process. I gave you a guided meditation to show you so that the monkey mind would get out of the way. But actually, it just takes a moment in time, a few moments maximum. So the homework is to stop fighting with Swami, number one. But to do that, you really have to be willing to become zero. God is the only hero. The rest are all zeros. But to get there, you have to let go of everything. Let go, let go, let go. Let go of your tensions. Let go of your worries. Let go of your attachments. Let go of your addictions. Let go of your problems. Let go of whatever it is that is holding you back. Let go of it all and become empty in the Lord. Become zero in the Lord. And then what happens? What's left? The whole ocean is there. This endless river of love is what you have become. You were only so much before, right? And then what happened? You expand. You become the whole thing, right? You become the whole thing. Just awareness. Just absolute consciousness. That awareness is all that exists. It's just awareness, just conscious. The rest is all BS. It doesn't exist. It's just Maya, what you have created for your own enjoyment. This whole creation that you see is just a mirror for yourself. That's all. It's just consciousness aware of itself. That is all you are, and that is all that exists. But just stop fighting. Yeah? Okay, so the homework is to stop fighting with the Lord. First, you have to be aware when you are fighting with the Lord, then you have to figure out, why am I fighting so much? Right? Why do you fight? You can apologize if you want and say, I'm so sorry, I won't do it again until tomorrow anyway. Right? And then see if you can change it. See if you can allow the Lord to love through you, to speak through you, to think through you, to act through you to breathe through you, to be through you. 
That's what's happened to us when we are with those atomic energy scientists. That's what happened to me when I was with that uh, vice president of that uh, laboratory. They were falling in love with us because it was Swami who was working through them. We became zero in that instance and allowed his love to come. You can do the same thing also. Any last questions from either the audience or from the online audience? Either one. I feel sleepy. If you feel sleepy, you need to wake up. If this were a soccer game, you probably wouldn't sleep. If this were, hmm, what do you really like to do? If it were a big chocolate cake in front of you, you probably wouldn't sleep, right? So if you want liberation, you have to wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Stop sleeping. It's enough. It's also one more question. Somehow I see things as a third person and feel there is something blocking, becoming one with that love. That's all monkey mind. It's all monkey mind. Just leave it alone. Tell the monkey mind to be quiet and just allow yourself to melt into the Lord. Whatever is blocking you, let go, let go, let go. You don't need to hold on to those blocks. You know our thoughts become things. Our beliefs become things that constrict us, that constrain us, that prevent us from growing and becoming zero. God is the only hero. The rest are all zeros. Become that zero, finally. You know? God puts a one and then you have value. Otherwise, without the Lord, you are nothing. But in that zero-ness, that nothingness, you become everything. Yeah? Okay. Any questions from the live audience? One here. Just take the mic, please. Actually, you know, this uh, merging with the Lord, uh, we normally we are taught to believe, and we believe that this merging is you're hoping for after we pass over, like... Why wait? We, <laughs> so you want to merge with the Lord only when you pass? That's all. Huh? We always pray that, uh, please... Why are you so slow? Yeah. Ah. So that with this body to imagine merging over with Lord is a bit uh, who are difficult. You, who are you merging with? Yeah. With whom? Our Lord. Where is the Lord? Outside of you. He's outside? See? Oh, Where? He's inside us. And that we yeah, believe, but again, when it comes to practicing... It's all, <laughs> those are all constraining beliefs. The same beliefs that we just mentioned, what you are just saying, that we believe that we merge in the Lord at the time of death and we pass on to Him, that is all BS. It's all baloney. It's just another constraining belief that constricts you from becoming what you really are. You are the Parabrahman. You are God. Brahma, Vishnu, Maheshwara. That is you. You are Saraswati. You are Lakshmi. You are Rudga. You are Christ. You are Rama. You are Allah. The whole thing. Not you as the human form with a name and personalities and experiences. That is Maya. But the true you is God. The rest is just play. It's just play. So with that, let's end with Om and Three Shantis. Please practice the homework. Don't fight with the Lord. And we'll see you again uh, next month to review your homework, both online also. Those of you watching online also have to share your homework. We'll see you then. Let's end with Om and Three Shantis. Om Shanti 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 Samasta Loka Sukino Bhavantu Samasta Loka Sukino Bhavantu Samasta Loka Sukino Bhavantu Om Shanti Shanti Shanti